welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode 96. Today, we're going to remind you why you don't want to overlook the detail photos when you travel. Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And before we get started, I want to let you know that show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 96, including a free transcript, and there'll be links there to subscribe. You can also find this and other episodes at photoflunky.com. And of course, I want to remind you that I've got a free ebook available for you. It is called Creative Portraits, and it's about the emotional and creative side of portrait photography, not the technical issues so much. And you can find that at williambeam.com slash free book. Get it, read it, download it. Maybe not in that order. Share it with a friend. Tell them where to get it. Hopefully you'll like it. I think you'll have a good time. We're talking about detail shots. And honestly, this is something that I've had to get better at. I'm horrible at taking detail shots. I always go out there. I'm looking for the grand image. I'm looking for something that's really going to make a statement as a single photograph. And the problem with that is when I want to go and create a collection of things to try and tell the story of my travel, it doesn't work when you've only got one type of photo. That's true. And I've got the opposite problem because I am just naturally tuned in to spot the details and I ignore the big picture collectively. Not surprisingly, we're at opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to photography. The reason why you want to collect those detail shots really is so that you have a collection that tells a story of your trip. And by detail shots, I'm thinking of things that, not necessarily small things, but things that are part of your experience. You know, it could be the food. It could be something that you saw, something that had an impact on you, or it could be just some of the local color and flavor. I mean, when you're looking at detail shots, what kind of things are you looking at? Well, for example, if I walk down a street in a quaint place with a lot of character, I'm just giving an example, and I was somewhere on vacation, you get the person who will take a, a wide angle shot you know, down the street and they'll get this beautiful overall picture that you, you kind of get to experience what it's like to really be there looking down and and you've got this full peripheral vision. I don't see things with the full view. I tend to zone straight in. It's almost like my eyes have a macro zoom lens on them or something. And I, I, I tend to go straight for the details. So I'll see the little details on a street sign and I'll, I'll immediately focus on that or I'll see a little a setup done, a, a display in a store window and I'll focus in on something like that. So I, I tend to, you know, maybe something even in the cobbles in the, the street, something's been chiseled out there. I, I tend to look at, I've just always, I think I'm naturally drawn to the details rather than the big picture. And my, my big picture is made up of the details where for other people, maybe they see the big picture and then they find the story within. I think we've got a couple of examples of how this works. One of the things that we are working on is a story for our other blog. It's called Orlando Local. And we wanted to do an article on the best Instagram shots in the Magic Kingdom. And what does that really mean? So we went there and we were all taking photos. I mean, you, me, and Tove, every one of us were out taking photos. And when we got them back together and looked at them, we could see the difference in how we would see things. I was looking for places where I could maybe take uh, portraits of Tove while she was there. Because a lot of Instagram is like, here I am in this place. Yeah. But one of the things that you pulled out that I really liked, we wanted to show, you know, some of the snacks and food there. And we went and got a Dole Whip. And we're trying to, I'm trying to hold these things up against, they're not really statues. What do you call those tiki gods? Oh, yeah, the tiki gods. Yeah, they're just big, tall tiki gods up there. And you hold this little tiny Dole Whip up to it. And it doesn't work that way. And we tried, if you try to back off some things in Walt Disney World to show everything, you're going to get a whole bunch of tourists walking between your shot. Yeah. But you found a little skull that was along the wall. I turned around and it was right there. And I thought, this, this works. It, it kind of, it set the stage for where you were. Anybody who knows that area of that particular Disney park knows exactly where they are. And they also know that's where you get the Dole Whip. And the two go together. And I spotted the statue and I put the, the Dole Whip down. And that was, they, they paired for me. It wasn't just a matter of fact that you found a detail. But also the color, you know, it's like between, it was kind of like a black obelisk kind of color. And then the Dole Whip was a, like an orange vanilla kind of, well, pineapple well, the, vanilla. the black had like a lot of blue in the granite. It just really worked well. And I've looked at that shot and I thought, that's it. In 
people who go to Walt Disney World are looking for, there's a phrase called hidden Mickey. In other words, the engineers who put all this stuff together, I guess I'm supposed to call them Imagineers. Yes. They they will always look for places to put, you know, the little Mickey Mouse head in places that you don't expect to see them. It could be in the cobblestones. It could be on the wall. It could be in anything. And those are detail shots that the whole millions of people, I guess, attending at Walt Disney World are looking for to try to include. But it's not just there. When we go travel, our vacation we had in Sanibel last year, we had, you know, shots of the food. We had shots on the beach with the, some of the shells. I mean, Sanibel is really known for its shelling. Even with the restaurant, outside while we were waiting, there was just this enormous chair, an yes. enormous wooden chair that was painted. And you sit in it and you look like a toddler. Yes. That was kind of cute. But you see, you spotted that and you saw the shot in that. It, it was part of our experience, yep. though. Whereas I'm the kind of person who will have a glass of wine and maybe be sitting with a meal and I'll look through the glass of wine and through the top, I can kind of look, I don't know, like over the wine, through the side of the glass and see the food kind of coming up through the clear side of it. And that, that, that's my shot. I, I, I think we're just wired differently for how we see things. And that's the beauty of it. But all of these are part of the experiences that we're having. And I think that's why you don't want to overlook them is simply because when you're traveling, it's not just having the big vista. So for going back to my Walt Disney World and the Magic Kingdom example, you can look down Main Street and you can see Cinderella Castle and you can get a shot that millions of people have gotten here before. And it's going to change you know, from day to day, depending on the weather, depending on the time and who's there. I've got some shots that I really love going down Main Street. And yet that was not the only part of the trip. So if I only show something like that, I'll walk away with a few photos and they might serve as individual photos. But if I want to tell the whole story, I've got to do kind of what the advice that I got from Joe McNally. He talked about if you go to shoot the Kentucky Derby, he says you go from big to little. So in other words, you might show the entire racetrack. Then you go show the preparation before the race. You show the horses, you show the jockeys, you show the ladies in their hats because yeah. it's well known for that. You show the cocktails, Everything from big to little and combined, they tell the story. Yes. And that's really why we're talking about don't overlook the detail photos when you travel. And I am notorious for this. I'm trying, I'm doing better, but I am trying to think what are the elements of travel that we need to show? Well, you see, and that's where I need to work on, on the other side, but I, I'm okay with the details. I just, uh, when I put my pictures together, Sometimes I have to explain them because if people aren't familiar with the details and how they fit into the scene, they don't understand what it's about. So I guess you and I make a good scene. We should go shoot together. Of course we do. <laughs> now, but here's the nice thing about details. You mentioned that you might have to explain them. They provoke curiosity. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, where did you find that? What is that? And those are the kind of things that actually, I believe, draw people into your story. Well, I never really thought about it like I, that. Well, it's all I think about is story. Well, no, I, I, I get the story side, but I never thought about the details provoking the curiosity. Let's say that some of the common elements that you're going to look at when you're traveling, some people, you know, they'll start off with getting ready or maybe being on a plane, you know, with those shots, that's, that's part of their trip. You want to see the hotel, you want to see the room, you want to see the exciting things that are happening in the area where you visit. But on a more basic level, you're going to ha probably have some really nice food. Yes. You're going to have some good drinks, I hope. Oh, yes. And, and I don't mean it doesn't have to be cocktails. You know, you might be out there with just a really nice milkshake. Actually, I've had some really good coffees in the morning sometimes. Oh. Never at the airport, but elsewhere. But, pe you know, people on Instagram are full of coffee shots. Yes. And those are details that resonate with people because, oh, that looks good. I'd like to, I'd like to have that. I'd like to be there. And that's kind of what I'm looking at the detail shots. It's not just always looking over the Golden Gate Bridge. It's like. Imagine you're standing there with, you know, your little cup of coffee and the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. That's right. Yeah. It gives you more creative options when you include the details and maybe put the big major thing in the background of a shot. Yes. So it tells the story. It's not just that I'm here by the Golden Gate Bridge, but I'm here having a moment with my coffee. Oh, I'm often having a moment with my coffee. I had one this morning, my coffee and my crazy socks. And I'm just making that up because I don't drink coffee. I do. When you're looking around at details, how do you find the right details? What do you decide, I'm going to include this, but that one's not important to me? That's kind of difficult to put a rule into it. I think most people, even if you're not into taking detail shots, if you understand where you are, 
you know if the detail fits. If it doesn't really say anything about where you are, it doesn't fit, which means it doesn't, it's not part of the story. So taking a photo of your, the, you know, your shoelaces untied on a paving stone waiting for a bus means nothing. But if there's a specific type of stone that is unique to where you are, that might be a different story. And I'm just giving silly examples. Some things fit within the context. It has to be in context. And if you right. cannot make some kind of connection with where you are with that detail, it's not, that, that's the kind of thing that I'd say, well, that's for me because I get it, but I don't want to have to explain it. No, but I, I know what you're talking about. So for example, if you're in your room and you take a picture of your toes, nobody really cares. You go to the beach and you see the wave just coming up and running over your toes and you take a picture of that. It's like my toes just touched the water. This is my first moment at the beach. There we go. That and, works. Yep. And then you have context with the place where you're at. It may not tell you which beach that you're at, but it tells you something about the experience that you're having. It says you're at the beach. Yep. Or even something as simple as the people you meet. We, we meet a lot of people when we go out, but if somebody's done something really special for you, you want to take a photograph of them. Yes. I remember we went to the Halloween party at Walt Disney World, and there was a gentleman outside the ice cream store that had a little frame or picture frame. Yeah. And he was great. Yes, and, he and was. We, and we got a photo of you with him hanging out with that little frame. He was so cool. It's that sort of thing where people who impact your stay can make a big difference. They're part of the details too, I think. Yeah. Also, even like wintertime, Christmas time, if you live in a colder climate. I mean, I remember going to a German Christmas market. It was a freezing cold, you know, where every breath makes clouds of smoke. It looks like you're vaping or something. And it was just kind of getting dark. It must have been about 3.30 in the afternoon and it was already getting dark. And um, Tove and my mom had stopped for some hot cocoa and they were leaning over with these. Tove had the stick of marshmallows that was dipped in chocolate sticking out of the hot cocoa. But the breath from, you know, you know was making a fog and so was the steam from the cocoa. And you had... My mom trying to, grandmothers always want to try and help. And she was trying to fix something or clean or wipe something. And there were these two knitted hats with the pom-poms leaning forward over this cup of cocoa. And you couldn't really, if you didn't know them, you wouldn't know who they were from the photo. But it was just that moment of, you know, in, back, in the background, you had the snowflakes and the Christmas um, lights and things. And there were decorations in the background from the, it kind of gave a setting. This is winter. It's cold. It's Christmas and I have something warm. And you kind of, to me, it was like the warm and the cold. You know, another thing that came to mind for me was something that is maybe specific for an event like Mardi Gras, the beads. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you're going to see those on the street. You're going to see people wearing them. But you know what? A nice little set up table shot with the beads and maybe something else. The masks and feathers and yeah. Those sort of things kind of people instantly recognize the beads, the colors, the mask and the feathers. They know what it is. And it's like, those are details that you want to get to kind of commemorate the event. It's yes. not just seeing people in them. It's like these specific objects are part of your details. Oh, absolutely. That can go with, I think, any kind of travel you do. If you're going on a ski trip, you want to show your gear. I do it all the time with my stuff. I mean, I run. Everything for me, you know, I cannot run without my feet. I would love to run barefoot, but I don't run on surfaces that are suitable for barefoot, so I wear shoes. I have a lot of photos that feature my shoes. They just go because no matter what I put together for what I had on my run, if the shoes are there, there are running shoes that kind of links what I, the details into the story. And the tools that maybe somebody uses. I did a photo shoot with someone who's a cowboy. And yeah, we did portraits of the cowboy. But I also took photos of his equipment. You know, so the lasso rope that he had, the knife that he had, and just the tools, even, you know, right down in the boots. These are parts of who he is and how he uses these things to do what he does for a living. You know, even right down to his horse and the saddle, obviously those are going to be important elements as well. Some are going to be bigger and some are going to be smaller, but they all come together. And yeah, you want to take some action shots. You want to show the whole field where he's working, but those little detail shots, they give you the close up look. And those are the ones I think that speak the most, not so much even just about the action shots, but it's like, this is how he prepares to do what he does. For me, I'd be straight in on the boots. You got a thing for cowboy boots, don't I you? I do. I hope that helps you out. We were looking at uh, the idea of some detail shots. It's a place where I need really to, to spend more time. And we just want to let you know that it can be anything that is relevant to your travel and your subject. It could be street signs. It could be cobblestones. It could be something you see in a window. 
or something that you experienced. Maybe you went there for an event and you just need to show some of those signs or anything that was really has context with where you are. We're looking forward to seeing what your shots are. So if you like this episode and you'd like to take some detail shots, please leave us a comment. You can find us at williambeam.com slash episode 96. Thank you for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. Episode 96, as I mentioned, you can go ahead there, leave us a comment. We'll have show notes and a transcript there for free. And of course, there'll be links to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, and a few other sites. Thanks very much. We'll see you again next week.